you are interested in you are interested in recruitment. You're interested in, interested in firing out how to fire people and what to consider. You are interested in getting some help with the people in your organization. That's what we're talking about today in our live webinar here at Best Practice TV. This is our live monthly webinar. So if you haven't enjoyed one of these before, look out for them. They're about this time every month. If you're watching this after the event, welcome to Best Practice TV. Make sure you check out the description below the video. Hit subscribe uh, and stay with us as we talk about the winning formula for recruitment and how to manage and process people. It's, a, it's only a really quick session, just a little bit of light content for you. I'm Kobe Simmet. I'm the CEO here at Best Practice. Welcome everybody. Uh, we've got some great content for you today that we're going to go through. I've got my lovely team here, as always, helping me in the studio. We've got our team outside in the office on the live chat. So if you have got any questions for us as we go through today, today's a little bit technical. Uh, we've got a couple of things that we don't usually talk about here at Best Practice, but we thought we'd share our journey. It's something that we've been recently reading and learning about and that we've stumbled across some great information. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity for you guys to come with us on that learning journey, share your thoughts, share your experiences. But what we're gonna show you is, um, I guess is some recent information that we've stumbled across ourselves. You might already know about it, uh, but it's recent information that we've stumbled across that's going to uh, maybe give you more confidence to you know, fire people, because that's quite challenging, at least be aware. So I don't want to tell you guys to go and fire everybody, but I certainly would like you guys to be more confident in what the whole winning formula for managing people is. And what we talk about here at Best Practice every day, we obviously talk about ISO standards, we talk about environmental standards, you know, for quality, environmental standards, safety standards, data security standards, and they're all about developing policies and procedures to ultimately manage the performance of your organisation. But we often forget that our organisation is made up of people, and often with a winning formula for managing people, uh, both, both recruiting and identify, identifying and recruiting and onboarding people, performance managing people to get a return on your investment, and then obviously exiting people at the end, whether they choose to leave and go to a different ideal scene, or whether you ask them to leave because you're not getting your return on the investment. Often in organisations, it gets forgotten that it is a customer supplier relationship and you know employer employee relationship because you spend a lot of time together but often if you take the perspective that actually hang on a minute I'm the customer and I'm spending all this money and it's not working I'm not getting the desired results then it's about you know we're going to touch on some of the parts of having those conversations so um, thanks Jack we're going to um, just quickly talk about um, a couple of things uh, to let you all know so um, obviously we're a certification organization for some parts of what we do, and those are uh, pictures of our certificates over here, uh, and you can see environmental certification, quality certification, safety certification, and data security there. Uh, so cyber security is a, is a new emerging area for us. Those certifications are all about you know, using an international standard to, um, to bring forward and bring about uh, all the ideas, concepts, and targets in your business plans. That's a really good opportunity to talk about what we're inspired by here at Best Practice and what our, you know, our vision and our mission is. We're, we're all about inspiring customer confidence and realizing potential from your organizations through partnerships. The other thing that we do here, obviously at Best Practice, that you're consuming right now is lots of online content to help you learn, grow, and develop. And the other thing that I can quickly show you there on the side is a, is a quick snap if you look at that, that device that is our, um, that's a, obviously an iPad, I think, or a tablet there, and it's our online training academy where there's a whole bunch of great courses around ISO standards, and then some new content that's currently being produced on how to develop and implement a quality management system, how to develop and implement an environmental management system, how to develop and implement a safety management system, and now today we're starting to touch on, well, that's all the documented side of things, that's like the recipe book, if you like, but what about the people? So I'm just going to talk lightly on recruitment and the winning formula for finding great people and that's probably one of the top 10 questions that I get asked as the CEO here at Best Practice with the thousands of companies that we work with is like how do you find great people? Look I'm, I, I am not the best, I'm not 10 out of 10 uh, with finding great people. We've got great people here at Best Practice 
but then also some people don't necessarily fit. They don't, you know, they, they come on board with us here at Best Practice, but over the, the journey of employment with us, they either don't, you know, we find, we feel that we don't fit with each other or, you know, we don't get the return on investment that we're looking for. So we've started to unpack that and it's been really a challenge that we've been looking at for a number of years. And it's only now that we're starting to actually capture that. So this is the first time that we're gonna to come to you with a live webinar. We're starting to produce written content. So we talk about our socials over here. Uh, start looking out for some content on our LinkedIn page specifically. Some more videos will come out on our YouTube channel. Uh, and keep an eye on our website, the, uh, the trade secrets part of the bestpracticecertification.com.au website has got some uh, articles. And I saw in Jack's email inbox uh, when we were um, just prepping for this webinar that uh, Alexi has published a couple of great articles that are going to start coming through. So they're in draft and they'll be published in the next probably 24 to 48 hours. So have a look at, uh, and if you're watching this after the live event, have a look at the bestpracticecertification.com.au website and have a look at the blog. Uh, it's called Trade Secrets. Um, we'll bring that up for you in a moment. We'll jump on the internet and browse a few websites a little bit later in this presentation and, uh, and we'll show you what we've got there. So I'm uh, just going to check in on the housekeeping. How's everything going, Jack? All good? Stream's good? Quality's good? How many people we got online? Half a dozen? I can't yeah, even 13. see. 13. Okay. So um, hey, everybody that's watching live, uh, let me know. There's a, there's a comments, um, comments box there beside the, the uh, window that you're looking at us from. Let us know where you're watching from. <laughs> G'day, Herbert. How are you? Um, anybody else that's, um, that's watching? So Herbert, where are you today? So, um, and anybody else that's watching, um, let me know where you're watching from because I get um, really inspired to hear that people watch these videos from all around the world. Um, it'll give me a bit of an indication of, um, of where, to, uh, to where to see you. Sorry, where to talk to you. Okay, I'm gonna, while everybody's saying hello and waving and typing a comment, I will, um, I'll continue on. So um, where are we up to, Jack? I'll, uh, I'd love the next slide, please. Okay, fantastic. So I have been talking about um, a lot about over the years about the winning formula for recruitment. And you know, if an organisation can crack this and you know, obviously keep tweaking and improving it and putting it through that cycle of continual improvement. So you know, plan, do, check, and act as you go through that cycle of continual improvement. That applies to your recruitment processes and your winning formula for managing people. And so what I've done here for you, and, and this is really the first frame of all of the rest of the video content that we're gonna start producing for you. We thought we'd do a live presentation first, and then we'll start building it out and giving you more guidance. But really at a high level, the flowchart looks something like, you know, what we talk about here is, a, is our executive discussion. And that's really talking about, well, you know, often, Often what I experience as a leader in this business is someone will come to me and say, I need some more help. Um, you know, recently we were being asked for more help in the financial part of our business and we were being asked for more help in the sales part of our business. You know, we've got a marketing team, a sales team, a finance team, an operations team, and increasingly a, we've got a systems team that looks after all these great techno systems that we use. And then obviously we've got an on, our online um, uh, business is starting to grow for us. So really having an executive discussion because often I've experienced situations where an organization will sort of almost, it'll sort of grow in the wrong direction. It'll, it won't be a strategic direction because someone says, oh, you know, I'm desperate, I'm so busy. And rather than looking at process efficiencies and opportunities for improvement and automation of processes, organizations throw more people at it. And it's in those times of need that I've seen and I've done it myself, I've made the mistakes of recruiting based on like an immediate urgent need instead of a strategic view. And so when I've done that in the past and I've made those mistakes in the past, I've just grabbed people that are available. I've, like, I've got a huge network of contacts, I've reached out into my network and people have just come on board because I'm desperate. I need someone to desperately do a quick job, jump in and do a job. And you know, we've hired those people full time and we've given them full time contracts but it really hasn't been, you know, it, has, it hasn't been in alignment. And so I think the winning formula is about having, you know, an executive, you know, I talk up here about an executive discussion, but have a think about what that looks like. You know, what is the plan? In thinking about the next six to 12 months, what does success look like for the organization's numbers? And then you can say, well, what do we need to do? When do we do it? Who needs to do us to get it there? And that really then will unpack do you actually require, not need, 
ban the word need. Do we require another person to do that work, to achieve that number, and get very clear that yes, it's a person or it's a process. We've done a lot of work here at Best Practice out here in the last 24 months building systems to automate our processes, automatic invoicing systems, automatic financial systems. The Training Academy does a lot of our processes automated, automated sends, you know, it manages payments and the payment gateway and emails and registrations and all that stuff is all automatic. Whereas in the past, people have been saying, oh, we need someone to take, you know, information. Uh, we need someone to correct email address, to send out passwords. All that is automated in our self-service system for you guys. So when you click on any of our training courses and buy any of our training courses, that's all automated. So I, I looked at the executive strategy there and I had the executive discussion with that team and I said, well, can't we find some software to actually do this for us instead of a person? And the answer to the question was yes. We found some software that cost us $7,000 a year and that was, you know, it was 10% of the annual cost of a person to do that work. Now, we didn't have anybody and we found something and so we were able to grow the organization for $7,000 instead of $70,000. So those executive conversations about the strategy, looking at technology, looking at you know growth of the organization, can we grow, you know, what are all the different options? So I'm not saying don't hire people, I'm saying you know, have, real, have a real think about what does success look like and what tools and resources and projects do you need to do to achieve that success and try and plan that out? You know, obsess over your goals, obsess over what success looks like, and then you can really unpack whether you require somebody, not need, require somebody. And so that's the executive discussion. So then if out of that executive discussion, you go, yes, we're gonna place somebody into a role, we're gonna create a role, then you need to really ask the question about budget. And I think, you know, in, in and my family, uh, many members of my family are in businesses. We all, you know, there's a few of us that all run businesses. And I think one of the mistakes we've made, and certainly I've made in the past, is I haven't done the assessment about whether I can physically afford that person. And I've gone, oh, yeah, okay, we're making a little bit of profit. You know, I'm going to hire that person. And, yeah, that'll come out of the money that we're making at the moment. But I've neglected to pay myself. And so, you know, as a business owner, that's really been something that I've made the mistake of doing is like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm not paying myself. I'm starting to make a bit of money when I should actually put that money in my pocket, you know, and pay off some of my house, the mortgage on my house or my debts or, you know, or some bills. But instead, I've gone to making a little bit of money, I'll hire another person. When in actual fact, I could have forced myself to have a better quality executive discussion to, uh, to actually, um, you know, manage that process. Uh, and we're getting better at it here at Best Practice. We're, we're not the best, you know, we're, de we're definitely not the best, but it's about, you know, constantly training that cycle of continual improvement. Um, you gonna shut? You gonna shut that door? No, coming in. Okay, so uh, a few more people joining us here in the studio today for the webinar, um, and then a measure of uh, measures of success, obviously. So, what does success look like in the next twelve months? What does success look like in the next six months? And really mapping that out before you hire somebody, and it's really critical that before you start interviewing and before you start talking to people then you can really start to map out, you know, what do we need to do? When do we need to do it? How do we go about doing it? Okay. Um, then we can start to map out, all right, well, we can go into the recruitment and interview process. We can start to look at um, um, acquisition and then we can go through that, um, you know, we can obviously go through that performance management process um, when, when we bring somebody on board. So then we can talk about the acquisition process and we can start talking about, okay, um, you know, how are we gonna to go to market? And, and really simply with the acquisition process, I, I can honestly say that um, it is higher risk for me personally to go to my network to hire people in a panic from my network um, that there's a higher risk of failure in the long term where relationships break down and there's, there's been not great results in the future than actually having the executive discussion, setting the budget and understanding, excuse me, the budget implications measuring success and what the measures of success are, then doing the acquisition process. When I have followed those generic steps, I've found that the acquisition process is easier because I'm very clear on what success looks like. And when people start coming in for interviews, then I can actually really clearly unpack what success looks like. And there have obviously been, you know, many, many recruitment processes here at Best Practice where we've talked about, you know, okay, this is what success looks like for the role. And then I get too excited and I start talking about other opportunities for improvement. And so it is really important to be going through that process and sticking to the process and following through with 
what's going with that, you know, going through the acquisition process. So then the, re- the question comes, you know, will you re- use a recruiter to find those A players that are part of this process? Um, will you do your own advertising and your own marketing and, and attract the attention of people? Uh, will you then go on and start, um, you know, maybe getting your employees to help you find people? So you can go through that process, you can think about acquisition, but that's where it fits in. So, you know, talking to a recruiter is not step number one. You know, which is which is down here. It's up the top here. It's the executive discussion, and then it might differ. And certainly, our COO here at Best Practice, uh, not a huge fan of recruiters, but I think it's horses for courses is, is is what I would say. And then for different roles, then you might need some some assistance to go into different places to attract people's attention. And I'm going to talk about that shortly. I do just want to let you know that we do now have the resources here at Best Practice to assist you. Uh, we have got a recruiter and that's part of that process. We've got a joint venture with an organisation. Uh, so reach out to me, send me a direct message on LinkedIn or send me or, or live chat us here at Best Practice. So if you are you know, a client or a family friend or one of our viewers here at Best Practice and you want some help with recruitment, we can talk through this process and we can coach you through this process here at ne- with our Next Practice business coaching team and myself. I can, I can have a conversation and talk you through this process and then we also have uh, we're starting to build our build our recruitment team and help with recruitment and you can reach out to us and we can start to, to find you candidates and take you through that. But we'll only help you with recruitment and we obviously charge for that service. We can do it anywhere in the world. So if you're watching this video from anywhere in the world, we can find and interview great people. And we can do that all online uh, for you, but we basically go through this process. So I'll take you through these steps or one of our team from Next Practice in our business coaching team will take you through these steps and then obviously uh, at the acquisition phase, we can help you with recruitment or you can do the recruitment yourself. Uh, so reach out to me personally. Uh, I'll give you my LinkedIn handle later on um, if you wanna talk about uh, help our recruiters helping you find people. Uh, then the next step really is about performance management. And when I talk about uh, where, where am I here, um, performance management, um, then um, you know, that really relates back to these measures of success. So it's, re- it's really important that we, when we're setting up our foundations in our winning formula, we're starting to build on things. And the mistakes I've made, like I, I will say I've made in the past is, I haven't actually really mapped out what performance management like looks like based on the measures of success. Uh, I haven't mapped that out. And I've brought people in and I've said, well, you know, look, this is, you know, I haven't really understood what success looks like. And I've made those mistakes. So really, what I'm sharing with you is the winning formula that I'm working on and I'm trying to improve every day. Um, and we're going to get better and better. And what you're going to see as a result of that is you're going to see ultimately you're going to observe our success as an organisation. But I really want to share it with you to help your organisation grow. And I'd love you, um, I'd love to see your success. Uh, love to see your success grow. Um, so hello, hello to everybody. I can see um, where everybody's from. So uh, we've got some. We've got Herbert watching from South Africa. G'day, Michelle, uh, up in Seven Hills. Anybody else that's watching, just uh, comment beside the video and let me know where you're watching from. Um, if you're unable to comment, um, you can actually, to make comments and subscribe to YouTube, uh, your, your Gmail, you log into your Gmail account. So if you haven't got a free Gmail address, there's so many great features that come with a free Gmail address. You get, G, you get Google Docs, you get Google Sheets. Um, this is a shout out for Google. It's, uh, it's not a sponsored promotion, uh, but we're Google users here at Best Practice. Uh, we banned Microsoft. We don't use Microsoft Word. We don't use Microsoft Excel. Excel. We don't use any Microsoft products. Uh, everything's managed through Google. So we have a commercial version of the Google Suite, uh, gives us the back-end access to our YouTube channel and gives us everything that we need to do. So Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, everything to do with, uh, with, with the Google products online. So um, we've got Apple devices and, uh, and Google software and it's absolutely fantastic and it's a lot cheaper. So heaps, heaps more uh, facilities. So to comment and subscribe and do all that sort of great stuff for our videos, uh, just grab yourself a free Gmail account, start using that to, to do the great stuff that's available on the internet. Um, okay, um, hello John and Katie, welcome. Um, so um, performance management um, really is about uh, really just determining the frequency to keep checking back in on the measures of success. And obviously the more often you do that, then the more uh, focused everybody's going to be on, on those goals. And it's what I said earlier about obsessing over those goals. Um, as some of you may know, I read lots and lots of books all of the time, and I'm rereading a really interesting book 
uh, at the moment, which is, it's got a funny title, but it's all about the psychology around achieving goals and what, what you need to do with yourself and how you're training your mind to achieve your goals. So thinking past the title, it's all about setting a goal and then obsessing over that goal and having every decision focused on that goal. Because you know, you know, if, it's, if you're not obsessing over it, it's just a dream. Now, those principles are amazing and it's a fantastic little book. The book's called Think and Grow Rich. But if you can look past the title, it's not about thinking and growing rich, it's about obsessing and, and, and obsessively achieving goals you set for yourself. Um, and really thinking about your goals uh, and, then, and then obsessing over those goals. You know, thinking them through, thinking about what that means, thinking about success, thinking about the milestones, and then obsessing over those goals. So have a look out for that one called Think and Grow Rich. Um, yes, of course. Um, if you just read it for what it is, which is Think and Grow Rich, uh, which I think is what uh, like many, many people would love lots of money. Um, but I think uh, when you actually read the book and then you read it again and again and again, you start to realise it's all just about obsessing over goals and just being um, you know, goals focused. Um, and, and then how to be goals focused and how to keep reaffirming it and that sort of stuff. Um, so performance management is the same principle. It's about just, you talked about these measures of success, you brought a candidate on board through your acquisition process, and then we start talking about performance management. Performance management also is when it's all going pear-shaped. And I'm gonna talk more about that. I said I would talk about how to fire people, um, and I've recently been learning lots about that process. Um, and, and that's something that I'm still not amazing at yet, but it's certainly something I'm learning and I thought it'd be worthwhile to share the content because obviously we can help you now at Best Practice. We can help you with recruitment. We can help you find people. Um, we've got a great team member that's joined us on a joint venture. Um, she's got some great stuff going on. Uh, she's absolutely fantastic as a recruiter. Um, but also, we probably got to support you with some information about, okay, well, it's not going well. You really need to part ways. How do you break up? Um, and breaking up's never easy in a relationship or at work, um, and specifically, in, you know, when it, whether it's a you know, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship or whether it's a marriage, there's laws and legal requirements, or whether it's employment, there's laws and legal requirements everywhere in the world. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I'd encourage you to understand how to learn and how to research, and that's no different to anything else we talk about here at Best Practice. And then obviously severance. So what is severance? Is it a, you know, is it a termination? Is it uh, somebody resigning from their role? Or is it a redundancy? And those are probably the three things here in Australia, which are really, or an end of contract, uh, if you like. So end of contract, uh, a redundancy, um, a termination, or, or, or a dismissal, if you like. And they're probably the four, four if that makes sense. So end of contract, resignation, termination, and then a redundancy would probably be the four categories, if you like, of, of a severance. Um, now, just what I will quickly say into a little bit more of that content and that detail, we're going to jump on the internet shortly and we're going to browse a few sites that are local to Australia, but very good resources for you guys out in the rest of the world, and we're going to jump on those in a minute. Okay, thanks, Jack. Okay, so the process flow um, is... Um, so really you're starting to think about this, and this is more about how do we do the acquisition phase, uh, I can talk more about strategy and we talk about business plans and management reviews and that sort of stuff in lots of our other videos, setting goals and objectives and talking about success uh, when we're talking about management systems. But what we're talking about here is where do people you want to attract hang out? So really that comes to the question. I really was, you know, when we were thinking about these slides and putting these together for you guys today, I was thinking about all the mistakes that I've made over the years about, you know, grabbing people out of my network and, and that sort of stuff. But really, I think you've got to ask yourself the question, when you're talking about an organization, who do you want to attract? Like you want to attract A players, you want to attract, you know, you want to have a great team. And the difference between, you know, success and failure is really the quality, the level of quality of your team. And, and really, I think we do forget when we're doing recruitment, I certainly forget when we're doing recruit, recruitment, but there's, that there's really three things that it does relate to that you, you need to compromise on two of these three things. It's time, so it's the availability of a person at the time, it's the quality of the person, and it's the cost of the person, or the investment you need to make in the person. Which one are you gonna compromise on? So a really great candidate might not be available right now, um, or you might not be able to get the level of quality that you want because you're fixed budget. And, and so it's really about thinking when you're starting to do this acquisition process and you're saying, well, I need to think about, well, am, am I, am, is it a specific price or is it a specific quality of candidate with skills, qualifications and experience? 
or is it a candidate that is, uh, is a, we need somebody right now. And again, I just use the word need, ban the word need. It's require. So you don't want to be needy about this process because that's when it all starts going pear-shaped. It's about we, what we require right now or what we require to achieve our goals and our success is this skill, this qualification, and this amount of experience. And our budget says this price. And then you can start to negotiate, negotiate around that. So what is your budget? What is your time frame? And what are the essential, essential criteria, the essential skills, the essential knowledge, the essential cultural values? What are all those essential things? What are the essential things when you talk about the people you want to attract? And I've been talking, I talked in a couple of our videos about how I've been reading a couple of other books. I've been reading Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss as well. And, and one of the chapters talks about how important it is to say, I want. When you're having this, because it really makes you think about, I want. I want, a, I want an A player with this skill, with this experience, with this ability, with this cultural value set. And, and that's really only been in the last couple of weeks. I've been actually, you know what, previously I've said, oh, you know, we really rec you know what we're really looking for is this, this, and this. I want, and, being, and it does actually force yourself if you're in that recruitment position where you're actually making those decisions, and I'm just speaking from experience, but it does actually challenge you to say, where do the people you want to attract hang out? And then we can start talking about this process of recruitment, which is how do we get their attention? How do we filter, test, evaluate, and check? And then you know, I'll, I'll talk about this down the bottom here. So, um, and, and, and this is from Tim Ferriss' book, Tools of Titans as well. I'll talk about this decision-making framework. So, when we start talking about, you know, if there's any questions, uh, g'day Kevin, good morning. Um, Kevin's, Kevin's uh, one of our team members uh, starting to master technology. So say hello if you're watching from anywhere around the world, let me know uh, where you are and where you're from. And if you're watching this after the live event, comment and, uh, and we'll see your comments because we get all the comments from everybody. So really this getting their attention, that's about your acquisition process. So you can help, you can have a recruiter help you get their attention. Uh, or you can get their attention yourself. Now, it might be that once you've identified where they hang out and you go to where they hang out. Now, when I say that, I mean things like LinkedIn, Seek, social media, universities, colleges, schools, uh, conferences, uh, networks, suppliers, customers. The people that you want to attract may hang out in all of those places. And, and once we understand what we want and be very clear about what you want, then we can start to think about how we can get their attention. And, and that's where recruiters and recruitment fits in. And that's our new business that we're starting to launch here at Best Practice is getting some assistance um, and having, uh, you know, giving you guys some assistance to find great people. So if you're struggling to find people in your organization, you can reach out to us and we can start helping you acquire people uh, with our recruitment team here at Best Practice. But in terms of getting their attention, we can advertise, we can advertise on any of the different platforms, but increasingly we're starting to think, see things like LinkedIn groups. There are often very specific LinkedIn groups with people with the skill sets that you're looking for. And so LinkedIn is a growing platform. It's Greenfield at the moment. It's ultimately always been a recruitment platform, but it's really interesting to start to see the LinkedIn groups and being a member of a LinkedIn group where the people that have the skills that you require for your organization hang out, then you can often go in there as a member and share that there's an opportunity. So putting an opportunity on your own company's LinkedIn page or on your own website and going into those groups and sharing those opportunities can save you advertising fees and it can save you um, the fees that you might invest with a recruiter. So I think, you know, I'll talk in other videos about what recruitment offers and, you know, what the, the benefits of having an, a person that's um, very, very highly skilled. And, and I think what I, what I identified what I want was I wanted a very highly skilled A player to help me with my recruitment. And so we started using an ex, well, we've done it off over the years as an external person to help us with recruitment. So it really depends on the role, but I wanted a very highly skilled person that could filter and select people. And, and for us, that's an outsourced service. So the, the organization that we've gone into a joint venture with, with regards to recruitment is outsourced because we don't require that person here in the business every day. So from a recruitment perspective, we don't require someone with highly skilled recruiter to be here every single day. We're not growing that fast. And so starting to cost benefit analysis. So you can actually get A players want to attract. So have a think about that. Now you can obviously pay, you can do advertising, those sorts of things. 
I've done everything here at Best Practice. We've done our own seek ads, we've done our own recruitment, our own filtering, we've used recruiters, uh, we've attracted people from our network, we've had people come in as volunteers, we've got interns joining us now at Best Practice, lots of different ways to start pulling people into the funnel uh, down, down that process. So then it comes down to what will your process flow be for filtering, testing, evaluating, and obviously checking. And you can start to understand, okay, well, how are we gonna do the filtration? Should we get some help? So here at Best Practice, yes, we do. We get help for different particular key roles. Uh, we get help to filter. We get help to test. We get help to do the evaluation, or we do the evaluation ourselves, and then obviously the checking. And that seems like reference checks and evaluations. But I think, Probably, you know, there's lots of different ways that you can do, you know, first interview questions and second interview questions and psychometric testing and, and reference checks and all those sorts of great things as part of your recruitment process. But I've got as the sort of the, you know, for the moment, the ultimate decision, if you like, rests with me. I ask myself the question, is this person going to have the grit and the grind to work with me and my team on a daily basis? Our team, the people out there. And I look, where's your phone? Is it flat? No, it's on charge. Hold up. Okay. I think we're back in business. Okay, we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. Our stream dropped out. Uh, we've got a storm going over the office here at Best Practice, and we've also got people on the roof cleaning windows and hanging on ropes and things like that. So it's uh, it's all very hectic here at Best Practice. So thanks, Jack. We can move on to the next slide. How are we going for time? We've got uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So I said I would talk about how to fire people um, and you know how to hire, how to fire, and I talked about that on LinkedIn this week. Um, and, and I think it's really about looking at the signs that it's time, you know, the signs it's time to dismiss. And really this is, you know, and, I'll, and this is where we'll jump on the internet in a minute. Um, and um, do you want to, excuse me, we're just gonna pause for a minute. Do you want, do you have an issue with your stream? Yeah, we do, but it's, I'm not sure if we, um Unplugged. Can you do a quick can you do a quick speed test on your phone? Stand by everybody. We're just gonna see if we can improve the stream quality for you. Just do speed test, don't about Telstra. Just do That's very low. That's downloaded. Yeah. Upload. That should be over 100. Stand by everybody, we're just doing a quick stream test. There's our problem. Uh, do you wanna go? Okay, we're back. Thanks to everybody for waiting. Um, we've got obviously a storm and stuff going on on the, re on the roof and that's affecting obviously our, uh, our signal. So, um, you need to unlock your first. <coughs> sorry, Siri. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, signs it's, time to signs it's time to dismiss. Could be that we're pushing for. Hello everybody, we're back. Uh, we're back, sorry about that. We've, um, we, we are really struggling with our upload today. So I'm just gonna quickly finish and talk about this and then if we can get another live, um, video coming up to you today, then we will do that. We'll switch, watch out for our YouTube channel and I'll finish the presentation. Um, but just quickly, while I have got something, and I apologize if it's choppy and, and uh, we're struggling with it, but we'll, we'll battle on. And that is that, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, some of the signs of distress is it's, you know, not achieving, you know, some of an individual that you're looking at or you're monitoring, not achieving their numbers or their targets. Now, there are assumptions here, and the assumptions are that the targets are reasonable, they're specific, they're measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based all the stuff we talk about in quality management systems. And, and after that, after we've been through that process, the business plan's been set, the targets have been achieved, and it's, and it's really about, okay, we've given them mentoring, we've given them performance management. You know, we've done all of that stuff, you know, you know and, and it's really about, yes, this position is required, yes, everything's going right, and just down the track, they're just not fit for the role. Now there are, you know, I, I think that's the one thing that I've made the mistake of not doing in the past, and it's one thing that hasn't been well managed, which is really looking at, for us here in Australia, it's really looking at the six, six month mark, and really starting to say at five months, 
because we have this six month notice period where you know where there's a you know a dismissal that really six month trial period uh, is is what we do here at best practice and what we do here in Australia is this six month trial and, and think about the le how long is your trial period your legal trial period or your employment trial period or your contractual trial trial period in your organization and, and starting to say how long is that trial period and starting to say again it's a fuck yeah or it's a no sorry didn't work out it's a no and really starting to be very very tough with yourself and that's probably where i haven't been as tough as i should have been and and i've let people stay longer than they should have and it's affected the whole team it's been very toxic and so signs it's time to dismiss someone's not achieving their numbers there's friction in the relationship there's just friction and and teamwork is not it doesn't include friction and it doesn't include stress and anxiety and all that sort of stuff it's about working together and helping each other to achieve the bigger why and the bigger vision and the bigger targets of the organization when there's friction friction starts in the relationship you know whether that's a numbers thing or whether it's a difficulty thing or whether that's working you know it's a team member that you're talking about it's you know they're near enough to being a member of your family when there's when the friction starts either you're giving the friction or they're giving you friction then you can really say that's a sign that it's time to actually really look about how do we how do we break up with each other um, coaching and development is not returning improvement and so you know this is this is implying that you do go through the coaching and development and and really it's about saying well if you compromised on skills qualifications and experience because you're a tight ass on the money then you've got to mentor that person you've got to coach that person you've got to train that person you've got to develop that person you can't just be a tight ass which i've seen lots of business people and they won't spend the money on people and so they take a lower quality lower lower level of skill qualification experience candidate and they don't mentor and groom them well then of course they're not going to hit you know their number up the top here so when the coaching and development that you have to invest in everybody and great organizations constantly invest in their people when you can say that it's not working you've really got to look at it's two parties now i constantly look at myself and i say are we is our development that we do with our people is it working is the one-on-one -on -one coaching is the mentoring is the development is it working and if it isn't working you've also got to say well is the person receptive to that are they coachable can you develop them because i always put it back on myself and i'm like oh i've got to keep changing i've got to keep improving but sometimes it's like people just aren't coachable we're not developing them and we're putting all this energy into that person when in fact the person really doesn't want to be there it's not their ideal scene and they're working at a job that they hate you know and i'm quoting gary vaynerchuk working at a job that they hate because they bought a house or have a house or have things that they bought that they can't afford and they've got to keep sucking it up in a shit job that they hate when in fact if they didn't have all those overheads in their life then you know then they could basically move on and they could do something else now that's not to say that you know family and kids and obligations responsibilities and commitments I get all that, but it's a two-way street because it's about people acknowledging that they are being given opportunities for coaching and mentoring and ask for coaching and mentoring and ask. And that's about reducing the friction. They're saying, I don't get this. I can't do this. Please help me to improve. Show me how to do it. Help me to do it so I can understand it and I can achieve my targets. Edwards Deming, the quality assurance guy, so we talk about ISO 9001 all the time. Edwards Deming, when he did, it, did his research and put together ISO 9001 and the original quality system said that by and large, most people go to work every day to do a great job and then their systems and processes and, and management system and organizations let them down and they, you know, they get gut-wrenched. That's true to a point. It's true to a point except that if someone just adamantly and vehemently hates what they do and they really have dreams of doing other things. And so when someone spends more time dreaming about doing something else than actually working at the organization, then that's another sign that it's time to dismiss. Okay, and then down the bottom, sorry, I can't see my slides, Jack. Um, um, I still can't see that, sorry, mate. Um, okay, uh, it's basically, no, um, the environment's toxic and it's basically no, friend, no longer friendly in the team. And really, you know, we've got to look at that from time to time. And, you know, as people come and go from teams, the culture changes and the friendliness changes and the vibe changes. And you've got to constantly monitor that as a leader in the organization. But when it's getting toxic and it's not friendly, you know what? It's just like we've got to work with each other. You know, you know, one can go, one can stay, whatever that might be. But it's really about saying, OK, well, how do we go through that process? So on the next slide that we're going to quickly talk about are some of our you know, frequently asked questions. And, and I'm just gonna quickly cover these questions and we're gonna jump across onto some resources on the internet. And Jack's gonna um, get the link ready to post in the comments beside the video. 
um, and we'll put, it, we'll put the link to what we're about to look at in the description. But really, some of the questions are, what is gross misconduct? Gross misconduct is obviously horrible behaviour um, that is just not consistent with um, you know, continuing employment with an organisation. So, you know, being drunk at work, taking drugs, you know, being violent, starting fights, um, you know, being aggressive, not turning up, like not absolutely not doing any work. And that's, you know, that's criminal exchange. Like, you know, remembering these people are saying, please pay me, I'm not doing the work. They say, well, if you're not going to do the work, I'm not going to pay you anymore. And then we've got to navigate our le local legal requirements to sever that employment and terminate that employment. But gross misconduct here in Australia is talked about if somebody makes a mistake or if somebody does something that it can affect the profitability of a company, then that's gross misconduct. If someone causes a risk to safety, that's gross misconduct. <clears throat> if someone speaks out about the organisation, either internally with their colleagues or externally, and they're saying negative things about the organisation, that's gross misconduct. Because there's nothing worse than internal people um, you know, saying negative things about an organisation. That's gross misconduct. And here in Australia, if someone affects profitability, they make a mistake that costs money, um, if, they, um, if they cause a risk to health and safety, uh, if they speak out about the organisation, they're just three examples of gross misconduct, which here in Australia is instant dismissal. No leave pay, no severance. I won't say that you won't get an unfair dismissal investigation from the Fair Work Commission, but when you read the definition, and we'll show it to you shortly about gross misconduct. So my question to you is, where are you in the world? Do you have a definition in your local employment laws for gross misconduct and what misconduct is? And what constitutes, legally constitutes, instant dismissal? And when you understand and you research the laws about instant dismissal, then you can start to understand that position you're in and really ask, ask yourself the question, if we're looking for reasons to get rid of somebody, then we can start to say, well, let's communicate with the organisation, these are the expected behaviours. This is the expected level of performance. These are the expected targets. And when we don't achieve those things, then these are the grounds for dismissal, these are the grounds for termination, these are the grounds for notification. So really, that's something that I want you to start to understand, and that's what I had to go and learn. What are the, you know, what is gross misconduct? We've had incidents in the past here, in the 14 year history of this company, where there's a ton of behaviours that have gone on, that have been grounds for, for you know, they've been covert behaviour, there have been issues that went on, and I didn't know until I actually found this website to actually start to understand my own legal requirements. Um, so, do you have to give a warning? Here in Australia, no, you don't have to give a warning. There's no such thing as three warnings. Um, you can give a warning, you can give one warning, two warning, three warnings, and we'll show you a website where you can get some temp templates about warnings. But in your jurisdiction, where you are anywhere in the world, do you have to legally give a warning? You know, we've heard rumours about, you know, we should give three warnings before we dismiss someone. Here in Australia, the legislation does not say you have to give a warning. You can, but you don't have to. So to instantly dismiss someone or dismiss someone, no, you don't have to. But what's performance management? And really that comes back to what compromises did we make on skills, qualifications and experience and money? Um, you know, we couldn't compromise on money. We went to the top of our budget and, and then we said at the top of our budget, you know, you know, those are the skills and qualifications and experience we expect to purchase for the funds that we're going to invest. And then performance management is two things. It's about getting winning results from your team, but it's also when someone's not performing and they're not returning on your investment, you're investing money in their salary and wage and they're not giving you that return on investment, you can performance manage them. And part of setting a performance plan, there are free, lots of free templates available on the, on the internet to sit down and have a conversation with someone and say, these are your targets, this is your expected level of performance. In, on this day, this day, this day, or this month, this month, this month, you didn't see, your, you didn't achieve your numbers. Here's your plan, let's work together. What skills do you think you need? What support do you need? And then start monitoring that. And if somebody is being performance managed and they're, they're, in, they're, and they're not delivering an improved level of return on investment, then you can terminate somebody. And it's following that process. Now that's an Australian, uh, obviously, example. But my question to you is, what is your local regulator? What are your local regulator's requirements, your employment regulator's requirements in any of the countries where you're employing people? I think it's important to go do that research and that'll be the homework after this webinar is to go and find those websites. Okay, how to make fact-based decisions. Here at Best Practice in every webinar, I talk about dashboards. I talk about the performance over time graphs that are, you know, they're our logo. And when we have 
our performance over time graphs, when we have our dashboards, we can look at the numbers and we can say this number, this graph, that's yours. That's where it needs to be. The graph goes like this, I needed that here. That's your job. I'm paying you this money with your salary to get me that number. And we work as a team to do that. Everybody affects everybody else and, and you've got to be co cognizant of that. But be mindful of that. Be mindful of that process uh, as, we, as we go through and look at um, fact-based decisions. And if you can use fact-based decisions, you can say, here's the facts, this is what went on, then it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then the next question is, what is inconsistent behaviour? What is inconsistent behaviour? What behaviours are consistent with a long journey with the organisation and continued employment? And what behaviours are inconsistent? And often we, ex we are often accepting, and I've made the mistakes in the past of being accepting of inconsistent behaviour that's not consistent with the team, it's not consistent with how I behave, how I operate, how I want the team to run, and it causes me stress. When I'm operating under stress, I will even demonstrate behaviours that's not consistent with continued employment of the organisation. So, you know, I'm a very, very productive person when I'm not stressed, but when I get stressed, then I'm making, ins I'm making quick decisions and, and I'm not being professional. And so really stopping and slowing down and meditating and doing exercise and getting good night's sleep and eating well, they're all the great things to help us make, you know, demonstrate consistent behaviour with the organisation. So I think calling people out and, and pulling them in and saying, look, the behaviour that I've seen, this thing that you did on this day, this fact, this fact, this fact, those are behaviours that are not consistent with continued employment with the organisation. And so when you do that, you say, well, if those behaviours, here's a warning, that behaviour that you did right there, don't do that again, because if you do that again, you'll be instantly dismissed. And that's about gross misconduct and also inconsistent behaviour. And starting, if we can do the research. So if you're on a device right now, screenshot this slide or make a note of what time we're up to, we're at, at somewhere around about 50 minutes. Come back to this slide, come back to the recording and screenshot this and do the Google searches on those, thing, on those things here. Where am I? Here. Do the Google search on this. So come back and screenshot this, these notes. Um, screenshot me doing this. <laughs> well, screenshot me doing this, <laughs> looking at this stuff. Um, but those are the things. Go and do a Google search on that and familiarise yourself with it. And that really is starting to give you guidance and advice on how to confidently dismiss somebody. Okay, thanks, Jack. How are we going? Uh, we're almost out of time. How's our stream? Is it going okay? Yeah, it's all right. All right, so we're going to put, for here in Australia, these are our, uh, this is our regulator. It's the Fair Work Ombudsman. Um, and it is here in Australia. It's a website that I think we should all be familiar with. Anybody that works in any organisation, it's obviously the people management part of your management system, legal and other requirements. And we found this, web, we found this website here, Managing Performance and Warnings. And there's a whole bunch of great information. It talks about you know, managing performance. A little bit further down, it talks about gross misconduct. If you could scroll for me, Jack. Uh, we've got definitions of you know, under, what is underperformance, uh, serious misconduct. Now, this is our regulator in Australia. And the disclaimer is this is for employers in Australia. However, for you guys watching elsewhere in the world, we're a very he heavily, heavily regulated labor environment here in Australia. And you could almost argue that these are you know, very detailed methods of best practice. And I think if you, it's very fair, it's very reasonable, all of this stuff here, how it's all laid out. And I, would, I, I, commend, I commend the Fair Work Ombudsman for this stuff. And, and I think we'll put the link to this. And I think having a read of this particular website and understanding these definitions, then please go and see if you've got something similar in your country because you can use this as guidance. You could copy and paste this and write this into your performance management manual. If you want to have a performance management manual for your organization, you want to have some documented principles around managing people, I think you could copy and paste this text from this website. And it's got best practice tips down here. And you know we always like best practice tips, but following these results. So we'll put the link to that, which is performance and warnings. Now, the other thing I wanted to just quickly show you is some templates. So Jack's just going to drop that link down now into the comments. And we'll also put the link in the description. Okay, so, so grab that link. You can copy that link now out of the comments beside and click on it and go research it. Now, the other thing we've found uh, that we've been using recently is these templates. And there's a whole bunch of great templates. And I've always said, don't buy anything. Don't buy templates off anybody. There's tons of great stuff available on the internet. Again, this is, legally this is a legal website for Australia. It's the Australian Regulator for Employment. Um, but they are great templates. And you could take them anywhere in the world and customize them to suit your own laws. But what's really cool down the bottom here, if you go right down, Jack, 
is managing performance. And there's a whole bunch of templates in here. Managing underperformance and then ending employment. And there's termination letters and there's warning letters and there's a whole bunch of templates there. And you know, it talks about gross misconduct and it talks about all that sort of stuff, severance of employment. And so for those of you who are our Australian clients, I would highly recommend, don't go and create these templates yourself, just use these templates that are available from your regulator, your employment regulator, and particularly go and read, just read this stuff, it's really interesting. Uh, because it gives you more confidence in managing your team and, and for me it gave me more confidence in understanding that. So I want you to just be aware of that. Okay, we are out of time and uh, we've got internet issues again. So I'm just going to say thank you very much for having us. Um, what I want you to please do if you don't uh, follow me or if you aren't connected to me on LinkedIn, follow my LinkedIn account which is at Kobe Simmet. There it is there. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn and it won't let you connect and you need an email address, it's Kobe, just move the at. So it's Kobe at simat.com.au. And I don't write it down because then I get peppered with spam. But if you need an email address to connect with me on LinkedIn, you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, please do that. Or click, find me on LinkedIn and click follow. Um, but that's the best place to direct message me. Send me messages on LinkedIn. It's the best place to message me. Um, and I know a bunch of you there are, are used to messaging me. Um, this is the YouTube channel of Best Practice TV. Uh, we've got a great LinkedIn page and Alexi Folson is back from his world travels. He's writing lots of great articles. He and I are having some great conversations. Um, I mentioned issue four last webinar is in production. It is literally Lee Dean is back from traveling. He's been over in the States at Rensport um, doing some stuff with Porsche. He's back. He's our desktop publisher. He's tweaking issue four of certified. If you haven't got a copy of issue three, there are hard copies available here at the Best Practice Head Office. Um, and you can download it, you, hard copies here in the Best Practice Head Office here in Australia, but you can also download a soft copy. So if you haven't got a soft copy of Certified, it's free and it's available on the Best Practice Training Academy. We'll put the, the link to the Best Practice Training Academy again in the description below. We've got a bunch of great courses. So if you need help finding people, if you would like some assistance with talking about how do we recruit, if you'd like the help from one of our great recruiters here at Best Practice, Jo is amazing, she can give you some assistance. So reach out to me, send me a message on LinkedIn or live chat, hit the best practice website and live chat and say, we'd like to talk to you about recruitment um, and we can help you with that. We can talk to you about our fee proposal and how we're going. We look at where people hang out, we follow that process. I will personally help you with the executive conversation about budget, whether you, whether you actually need somebody. Um, and I'll, I can talk you through that process. I can help you with that. From my perspective, we can have a Skype meeting or a Skype call anywhere in the world I can talk you through that and then Joe can start to help you find great people. Um, so look out for that. Um, look out for the recruitment side of things um, and also look out for the team at Next Practice. So that's, that's the team that we're developing at the moment. Uh, a lot of this work is coming from that's Next Practice there and some of the things that we do uh, empowering improvement in, um, in, uh, in what we're doing with our business coaching team. So we're building and growing our business coaching team, lots of great services. So if you want help running management reviews, if you want help running strategy, if you want help, you know, unpacking budget, decisions, conversations, process improvement, all that sort of stuff. We've got a, a whole bunch of great workshops. And we've been doing lots of those workshops with these webcams in this format where we can present to your group and they can watch and we can do that anywhere in the world. So if you'd like us to present a specific session to your group live via this mechanism, then reach out to me and we can help you. We can do that anywhere in the world. So if you like this format, you want me to customize a training course for your team anywhere in the world, reach out to me and I'll help with that. So. Thanks everybody, that's been Best Practice TV. That's been our winning formula for recruitment and winning formula for finding great people webinar. I'm gonna see you next month. What do we got next month, Jack? What's on? Um, Jack doesn't know, know. okay. <laughs> we've been so busy today, we've forgotten. Look out for us next month. Um, now, we, because we've got an internet connection issue, I will answer questions if you live chat us. So if you've got questions about this, if you'd like to talk about this, go to Best Practice Certification dot com dot au and a little live chat window will pop up and you can type in a bit of text there or you can send us a message to any of those accounts i'll monitor my linkedin account uh, for messages and i will monitor the best practice facebook page for the next couple of hours so if you've got any questions and you'd like to chat or call the office if you're here in australia call the 1300 office i'm right here i'm here right now and if you call